As Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Armies, I, George Washington, take honor in recommending to Congress General Benedict Arnold for promotion to Major General, as this most active and courageous patriot has done everything that honor and love of country suggest. No other officer could have led an army who remains uncharted wilderness. In the dead of winter, harassed by savages in the pay of the crown, smallpox, starvation, and massive desertion. A feat that compares to Hannibal. No other officer, outnumbered 20 to 1, would have attacked Quebec, the mightiest fortress in the Americas. Had Arnold not been wounded, few doubt Canada would be the 14th state. When the enemy launched an armada of warships over Lake Champlain, Congress called upon Arnold to stop the enemy advance. Though Arnold's entire fleet was destroyed in the battle, the enemy was so badly mauled that was forced to retreat back to Canada, saving the revolution from certain disaster. Leading an orderly retreat over Lake Champlain, Arnold was himself the last man to leave Canada. Even as I write, this ardent patriot assists General Gates in staving off another invasion from the north. In all the army, gentlemen, there is no other officer more deserving of promotion than Benedict Arnold. Faithful servant, etc., etc. Send this post haste, Hamilton. Yes, sir. Why the parks am I calling up the battlefield when I have the lobsters on the run? I issued orders for a retreat. Pull back your troops. <laughs> We can't order a retreat. We have a split command. You have to consult with me first. Congress has elevated me to first in command. I have not won my rank through friends in Congress over brandy snifters. You have an order. No wonder your own men call you a Granny Gates. Put your knitting aside and come and see the battle up close, General. I shan't suffer your insults any further, sir. I shall not deny any gentleman or even yourself, sir, the opportunity to defend his honor at 12 paces, be it in public or private, with sword or pistol, or, if you please, with Tomahawks. There will be no dueling under my command, Arnold. For a duel requires two men of honor. We seem to be lacking one. Arnold, if you attack, I will have you court-martialed. God bless America.
like a medal of honor. But you're a true hero. The main arteries are severed. The leg must come off, Mon General. Remove the ball, set the bone, start the bleeding, and bind me up. You risk gangrene, mon general. Major Franks, if he tries to take my leg, shoot him. Yes, sir. Congressmen and officers to oust your excellency. The object of which is the installation of Gates as commander-in-chief. Reed will then control Congress and the army. There are times, Alexander, when my dismissal would be happy news. I miss my wife and long to smell a freshly plowed field once more. A great triumph for America, General. I thank Your Excellency. Let us hope our past failures on the battlefield have been redeemed by the Republic's new savior. And what part did General Arnold play in the battle? I believe the General was wounded. would entwine. When jealousy nor care corroded in my breast, but visions light as air presided o'er my rest. Now nightly round my bed no airy visions play. Captain Andre is quite the Renaissance man. What you say, Papa? My head what prospect is he? He's a playwright. But far from those sad He's a shameless social climber. Your choice should be a property man, a man of the world. A wretched lover type. Captain Andre. What? Pardon, sir. Word has come that Burgoyne has surrendered his army to the rebels at Saratoga. All officers have been ordered to return to their duties at once. every opportunity to speak with my father. Darling, I promise to make good my proposal at the very next occasion. Understood. Margaret never understood. Father. I'll raise them properly. <sighs> Providence, take it away, but 
Give it me. Yeah. Good, you sister. One, two, three! One, two, three! One, two, three! One, two, three! That man is our chimney sweep. Just another rebel spy caught counting our cannon. Captain, are we losing the war? Nay, Mr. Shippen. The French fleet may blockade us here. Our withdrawal is pure prudence. Prudence for the army is a death sentence for we who remain loyal to the crown. An army sent to defend us now flees to protect itself. Never doubt we are the finest army in the entire world. Notwithstanding Saratoga. Saratoga, dear Peggy, it was a fluke, owing to the mad, impetuous charge of this... What was Arnold before the war? An apothecary, a pill vendor. An apothecary who forced a bitter pill down the king's throat. And now we, who have paid our taxes, who have calloused our hands to implant British values in a barbaric land, now we have been abandoned to the diabolical mob. <laughs> Regret I must bid adieu to you, good people. You sold my last ship. How am I to do business without a ship? I thought it best to sell before it was confiscated by the British. You have ruined me, Hannah. I'm bankrupt. I might have had a life of my own, but I gave it to you. Raising your children, looking after your business while you were off seeking glory. And now my wages are gross ingratitude. Or oh, you seem to forget that my youth was spent in servitude for you and our mother. What? General Arnold. Arnold died at Saratoga. Now one more drop of blood for this ungrateful country. Uh, letter from Commander-in-Chief Washington. Dear Papa. Captain, the last barge awaits us. I am aware of the fact, Sergeant. You miss me. I miss you before I go. What do you miss? Every stolen kiss. One train new. And I say that advisedly, as please don't look. Your papa hides behind the curtain in the upper story window. Papa is impervious to my sentiments. In my mind, I'm kissing your lips. That I pledge. Is the master watching you? Like a judge, the culprit's guilty of love. Captain Andre, the last fast for Shiva without us, sir. Ride ahead, Sergeant. I'll follow a nod. Covered with glory in the service of my king, when my rewards are overflown, I shall return to take you for my bride.
British Grenadier can fire and reload three times in one minute. The Americans run. You will be fast enough. Now you will be dead. Run, two, run. say about your leg i fear my surgeon more than my foe oh my foe would lop off my leg because it's his duty my surgeon because he knows how <laughs> i'm sorry about your wife the fever took her quickly there's a blessing in that how's martha Oh, <laughs> she threatens to enlist if I'm not home soon. <laughs> Benedict, I simply cannot accept the resignation of my finest officer. When Congress promotes inferiors over my head, withholds my back pay and reimbursements, I can only take this to be Congress's roundabout way of requesting my resignation. I understood they offered partial payment. I won't accept a penny less than what they owe me. Does Congress withhold your excellency's pay? I have a special arrangement with Congress. I serve without pay. Congress has empowered me to promote you to Major General. I become impoverished and a cripple in the service of my country. To Gates, Congress gives credit for my victory. To him, they give command of the Southern Army. And to me, forgive me, General, a pair of gold epaulets. My family needs me now. I'm bankrupt. My business ventures are a shambles. There is nothing under heaven that could induce me to put on that uniform again. We will be hard pressed to find another Benedict Arnold. And the young Huron girls are not forbidden to lie with anyone they please. Alliances end when mutual pleasure ceases. <laughs> Mm. Now, our New England ladies have a false modesty, and our Southern ladies have a false docility. But the women of Philadelphia are beyond compare. Rumor has it they could give a virtuous man a poor night's sleep. <laughs> and uh, have these rumors been verified? A good general does his own reconnaissance. <laughs> know your strength, check your ammunition, and prepare for a vigorous campaign. <laughs> it was my privilege to fight under your command at Quebec and Valcour Island, sir. I give you my last drop of blood, sir. God bless you, lad. Where does he stay on? These are the best of men. If they quit, they know there will be no replacements. Congress seems to think Granny Gates can replace us all. <sighs> they do nothing. Dishonor you. Heap all blame on you. Why do you stay out? Every dawn, a miracle takes place here at Valley Forge. I awake to find my men still here, beyond all reason. 
And then another miracle happens. They still obey my orders. Their staying is an act of faith. Faith in what? In something greater than life itself. That's how I know the hand of God is upon us. I believe our cause is blessed and that manna will fall from heaven. What sort of manna? Some great victory or catastrophe will turn these 13 separate states into a nation. And what does he believe in? You and me. What is my next command, sir? Philadelphia. What's a battlefield soldier to do in Philadelphia? Convalesce. Until the time when we can campaign together, side by side. Now, as military governor, I need you to hold in check Joseph Reed. As congressman and president of Pennsylvania, the man's power has become dictatorial. You must prevent him and his minions from taking reprisals against those still loyal to the crown. Something else you should know. Reed heads a revolution within the revolution to oust me. As fate has seen fit to give me no heirs, I consider you the next best thing. Whereas it has been determined by the Committee of Public Safety that the Galloway residence shall be confiscated and sold at auction, and all the fixtures and fittings contained therein, proceeds of which will contribute to the cause of the Patriots. no jurisdiction in Philadelphia. For 500 days, we endured enemy occupation. Consequently, one loyalist shall hang every day for the next 500 days. <laughs> As the British have blockaded my ship in a New Jersey harbor, Governor, I was hoping to obtain an overland pass and transport my goods to Philadelphia. What sort of goods? Silk, taffeta, wool, linen, tea, sugar, cheese, perfume. Scarce luxuries. You can have the pass. I'll provide the wagons, but I want 50%. Governor, I'll take it and leave to... it, Mr. Shull. Major, write up an order for the wagon master to convey Mr. Shull's commodities to Philadelphia. Sir, army wagons. What other wagons are there? Well, it's just, uh, I think we should go through the proper channels. As military governor, I am proper channels. I need you to make arrangements for a grand party. Party, sir? And what would be the occasion? The second anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. Invite all the usual patriots, as well as the most respectable loyalist families in Philadelphia. Patriots and loyalists in the same room, sir? Reed might not back down next time, sir. When surrounded and outnumbered, Major, 
There is but one course of action. Attack. Pray you, Major. Who is that angel? Peggy Shipman. Her sister Sarah. Judge and Mrs. Shipman. Separate the chaff from the wheat. Sir? That's an order. Judge Shippen, Mrs. Shippen. We are delighted to attend, Governor Arnold. How do you do? How do you do? Please, uh, allow me to show you this fine bench. You think you've owned me. Ah. Miss Shippen, allow me to introduce myself. I know who you are, General. There's our Julius Caesar. Which are the better dancers? The British or the Americans? General is most presumptuous. A presumption grounded in my unshakable belief that in either camp, Miss Peggy Shippen is dreamt of more often than victory. General is also an audacious flatterer. I must protest my innocence, madam. Expecting loyalists and patriots to drink from the same punch bowl is ample proof of the general's peerless innocence. If believing that reasonable men can tolerate differences, I stand guilty as charged. Would the lady honor this peerless innocent? The dance. What if we wound, General? My leg wound is but a scratch compared to that which Cupid inflicted upon my heart the moment I beheld your incomparable countenance. Perhaps Cupid ought be more circumspect and loses arrows upon parties of antithetical persuasions. Pray you, madam, what color does love fly in this war? Touche. Perhaps Cupid was never more accurate to create a bridge of love between these warring factions. The general woos as he makes war. Oh, nay, madam. For in war, I seek to defeat the foe. But in love, I surrender all my forces to your happiness. I believe the general would say anything to win my love. I shan't win your love, madam. I shall deserve it. Pay you, general. Pay a visit to our house. Speak with my father. The presence of loyalists on this sacred occasion is an insult to every citizen of this state. To vindicate the rights of every citizen of this state, sir, indeed of this country, sir, I became a soldier, and I bear the marks of battle upon me. Forgive me, my memory serves me not. In which battles have you fought? Which field can claim to own a drop of your blood shed in your country's defense? You know I served with honor as Washington's aide-de-camp until last year. Yes. And when your country lay prostrate and bleeding, you quit to serve your own ambition. No so-called patriot who has open commerce with prescribed ladies shall lecture me on loyalty. I have not as yet learned to make war upon the ladies. I leave that to staunch warriors like yourself. I take great umbrage at your obscene loyalist sympathies. If your great umbrage would care to meet my high dudgeon at 12 paces, I would be happy to entertain you at dawn. Be it in public or private, with sword or with pistols, or if you please, with tomahawks, sir. Have you suddenly lost your appetite for satisfaction, sir? I shall seek satisfaction in the editorials of newspapers that expose you for the menace you pose to the Republic. A far less perilous choice, and one that befits a whispering plotter who lacks the courage to face a man of honor. Chocolate, more flowers. This nonsense has got to stop. 
They say Arnold's a widower with three young boys. Savages is more like. I saw them swinging from the drapes at Penn Mansion and fishing for strawberries in the punch bowl with filthy fingers. The General's dispatch informs he will attack us at three. Will some society with the General afford us protection from the rebels? And when the British retake the city, you will be seen as having been sort of a rebel. Not just any rebel, but the revolution's greatest hero. Neutrality must be preserved. He's not without his job. Didn't you see how the hero of Saratoga faced down the mob? Not three months ago, everything was Henri this, Henri that. Now it's Arnold this, Arnold that. I fear the arrival of the French. Have the left heels of all of my boots raised two inches. Now the cobbler mustn't know who owns the boots. There's a discreet cobbler in my synagogue, sir. Do you call this a shine? Sorry, sir. Damn servants aren't worth their salt. Have you made the down payment for Mount Pleasant? I'm afraid your accounts are insufficient, sir. What has the finance committee said of my reimbursements? Congress cites your lack of receipts. My lack of receipts. Inform the auditors that I purchased venison from the Abenaki Indians in the wilderness. Interestingly enough, the Abenaki Indians do not give receipts. Demand my three years back pay and sell the house in New Haven. Mount Pleasant will be mine. It's the finest house in America. Your beauty wounds me. And you alone have the power to cure my affliction. General takes his liberties with other so-called ladies. But I can assure you, sir, you shan't make bold with me. Such as I am, madam, I can only love you much too much. But far be it from me to pour the rivers of my affections into a teacup. Take me for a teacup. Your cup shall overflow, madam. If you will only let me. Listen with your heart. You will hear our children laughing, playing, living in the light of our perfect love. I have ever been attended by battalions of angels who have deflected all manner of harm from my person. 
Why then did this cursed ounce of lead rob my leg, my youth, my peace? This blessed ball took me from the battlefield and emparadised me in Philadelphia. For I found a love that heretofore I only knew in my dream. The deed to Mount Pleasant. For I am absolutely convinced of our future happiness. You have lighted within me a flame that cannot be extinguished by time or circumstance. Can you love me, Peggy? <laughs> Dealing Mount Pleasant to me is really a, a dowry in reverse. You've been Saratoga, sister. Return the ring. That young lady is my very last word on the matter. Is he not the property man of commerce? The man of the world you wish for me? Letter from a Connecticut colleague. The man you would call husband was raised by his Puritan mother to believe he was among the predestined elect. His father was a barrel maker and ship captain, often clapped in the town pillory for public drunkenness. And when he died, his destitute widow sold her nine-year-old son, Benedict, as an indentured servant to an apothecary. Your intended was a slave for seven years of his life. His reputation bespeaks a thin-skinned hothead who's fought 17 duels to acquire stature by pistol and sword, and now stature by marriage, to obliterate his vulgar, uncultivated past. Even his compatriots denounce him now. In confidence, I've learned that his leg will never heal. I say that is why we bow. For better or for worse! He could never care for you in the manner in which you are accustomed. Oh, we will endeavor to eke out an existence in my presence. You never live there, Peggy. Your general cannot make his mortgage payments as wealth's a sham. Puffery. Honor's all puffery. But these incessant attacks upon your character in the newspapers. These charges of malfeasance in office. Tripe, Your Honor. All of it, tripe. I cannot allow our family name to suffer. I'm afraid that unless and until your name is cleared, prudence dictates there can be no more involvement with my daughter. I shall demand an immediate court martial. Your Honor shall see all these absurd charges dismissed. Divine Providence has seen fit to exempt me from all manner of bombs, bayonets, and bullets. I shall not fall to read. Do you not see how a loyalist woman might sway his service? Congressman Reed, Arnold has done everything that honor and love of country suggest. You will not find a greater patriot on this entire continent. He lost an army at Canada. Against overwhelming odds. He lost a fleet on Lake Champlain. Stopped an invasion and saved the revolution. Disobeyed orders at Saratoga. Thank God. Then what defense do you make of the man who uses his office to profit from the war? As much as I detest the practice, there is no law in Congress or in the army that prohibits profiteering. Have you not moved your family into a confiscated loyalist house? I am not here to answer to you, sir. Many in Congress say Arnold must never command troops again. The man bewitches soldiers who return a love that borders on idolatry. Who's to say he won't turn Caesar? Sweep away Congress, declare himself king? Now, I am here to tell you, sir, that should the court-martial not find Arnold guilty as charged, the Pennsylvania militia may not respond to a call to arms. You know, we depend upon your militia. Indeed, sir. Pennsylvania may even compel Congress to leave the state and find a new home. Should Arnold escape justice, the United States may face the melancholy prospect of my state seceding from the Union and the war. 
That would mean the end of the United States and independence. Is your personal war with Arnold worth all that? The question is, sir, is keeping Arnold worth all that to the nation? I resign as military governor and request a court-martial to clear my good name. I beg you to reconsider. Unless my name is cleared, I shall not have my bride. Can you not postpone your marriage for six months? I promise love grows richer by waiting. My happiness has been deferred since the day I was born. For reasons I am not at liberty to explain to you just yet, your day in court must be postponed for six months. If your excellency thinks me guilty, then let me be tried. And if found guilty, then let me be executed. eat something. Three days without food, my word. I have no appetite at all, Mother. I shan't be the first person to die of a broken heart. Mr. Shippen, Your Honor. My court-martial has been postponed indefinitely. And although justice can wait, this groom cannot. their dreams, but I, the luckiest of men, have my dream when I awake to see you. Send word to Washington. Ask for 20 men and a good officer. Yes, sir. Be brave. Soon men that I led in battle will come like avenging angels. Send no troops. They fear to overstep Reed's jurisdiction. Congress suggests that you apply to Mr. Reed for protection. Congress will not protect a national hero. It's a bill from Congress, sir, for the use of the wagons.
uphold the revolution. A revolution that creates a world where virtue is punished and vice rewarded. Where is Washington? You say he loves you as a father. Or what father would not make all haste, all effort to rescue his son? They called you Hannibal. But only when they needed a brave warrior to secure their seats of power. And that labor achieved, they just cast you aside like some lame beast of burden. Mm. Why do you still cleave to these charlatans who use and despise you? By the grace of Providence, you will rise again and come to your true destiny. Providence recognizes your worthiness and has broken your wings, but only to lay new wings at your feet. A vast army that would follow you to the ends of the earth. One army. There are twice as many loyalists under arms than the entire army of Congress. Thousands would follow you. Thousands upon thousands of Americans. Betray my country. I forbid another word. I only speak the thoughts you hide from yourself. gone mad. When it's headed for the rocks and the captain has gone mad. When the crew is mutinied. If one valiant man should seize the wheel and stir it back on a rightful course. I pray you, my dear, call him not by the name of traitor. What is he called? the waters with an innocuous letter to a close family friend. Sir Henry Clinton's aide de camp. What's his name? Captain John Andre. Take a letter to the king. Sir Henry, I've just received a most extraordinary letter from a lady I knew in Philadelphia. Mrs. Benedict Arnold. Her husband wishes to offer his services to the crown. If it's true, let us test this American Achilles. Have the hero of Saratoga obtain West Point. We should receive him happily with that prize. The mutiny spreads from regiment to regiment. Troops refuse to obey their officers. Without a fight! Without firing a goddamn shot! Lincoln surrendered Charleston and 5,000 men to Clinton! Another thousand killed at Savannah, and then Gates at Camden! That man has lost the entire Southern army! 4,000 men! They fled like deer before hounds! Gates abandoned the army to save his own skin! South was lost. 
Lost. Let's not call this treason. Darling, all they want is West Point. You will note that the letter does not say we greet you unconditionally. It says you are nothing to us without West Point. It is an insult. Imagine their disbelief that so great a hero should decide to defect. I won't turn fishwife and haggle over price. I lost my taste for this business. When this court-martial clears my name, I shall resign from the army, resume my shipping business, and devote myself to you and our children. How do you propose to put down the mutiny, General? If I had but one loyal regiment, willing to fire upon fellow soldiers. My Pennsylvania militia will do exactly as I asked. And the army would be most grateful. Some of the officers have let it be known that they would stand by you were you to declare yourself dictator. Not one soldier has died that I might be king. Captain, apprehend ten mutineers, any ten. Have them draw straws. Three short straws will be executed by seven long straws. Without discipline, there is no army. Take aim! with the greatest reluctance that I reprimand an officer who has saved the revolution, not once but twice, at Valcour Island and at Saratoga. A man to whom so much is owed by this country. Soldier, hold my horse. Save your breath to cool your porridge. What did you say? When the hero of Saratoga marries a loyalist lady, 
They can call a blue coat red tomorrow. Soda! General Stunt! Where do the blue coat you wear? Slay me not, sir. For then I would owe you a favor. Multiply that lout by 15,000. There you'll have our army. As she stands today, the Republic is a house of cards. Come. I need you more than ever. The manor I prayed for has come down as brimstone. If the enemy were to attack us now, we'd have no army to oppose them. My good name, that I strove to gild with high deeds, has been grown. I have bled for this country. You know my true feelings. I had to remain impartial. I have too often experienced the impartiality of my countrymen to expect less. The judges were lenient, Benedict. It didn't help your cause to challenge them to a duel. I'd rather they took my life than take my honor. Arnold is but another word for dog now. Not if you return to active duty. You will thereby regain the esteem of your countrymen. What soldier would follow me up a hill? The left wing of the main army will follow you. Three divisions, with only myself above your head. You can assume command today. What have I done? But they have agreed to the 20,000 pounds sterling you asked for. Peggy, the left wing of the main army is the position of honor, the most coveted command in all the army. Can you be so easily purchased? Purchased? It is the prize of prizes. With only Washington over my head, I would be second in command of the entire army. Second in command to a losing army seems a... Uh, seems a dubious honor indeed. Peggy, can you not defer to me in this? Darling, we have crossed our Rubicon. Our New York friends will feel hoodwinked. They possess damning letters of proof in both our hands. Imagine Reed's delight. Heads will roll. Not just yours and mine, but my family. Your family. Our children, Benedict. If we shilly-shally in this moment of truth, surely we shall fail. The warrior you once knew has died. I am no longer fit to command in the field. I must fall to the rear with the other cripples. I beg leave to request command of West Point. Command of West Point is a poor use of my best fighting general. I know you well enough, Benedict, to see you are at war with yourself. Let me share your burden. My burden would crush you. My love would prove the stronger. I do not deserve your love. And I do not deserve your reticence. I am a complete masquerader. How so? Better that I die in battle, that my sons might have something glorious to live by. Better death than this. Half man who missed his destiny. I must decline Your Excellency's most generous offer, and I beg leave for command of West Point if Your Excellency still thinks me fit for that post. I can deny you nothing, but I must tell you. You may have chosen our next front line. Our spies in New York inform me the enemy may attempt capture of West Point.
And I has her hands full with the boys. Sir? Henry already has a black eye defending your honor. Sir, I feel I must say again that your choice to live outside the fort proper poses security concerns. Our pickets will give ample warning of an attack, Major. Ample. Very well, sir. They're loving their new school. More than their new school loves them. My aide de camp has a bloodhound's nose. Goes there. Answer, knave. Or have a word with my pistol. Monk. Who are you? Joshua Smith, Esquire, at your service. If you be Arnold. You will refer to me as Monk. Gustavus Monk. What a far flung honor to breathe the same air as the hero of Saratoga. Quebec, Valkyr Island, Brandywine. I never fought. Fought a battle or three with Brandywine myself, General Arnold. When and where do I meet my counterpart? Ah, oh, straight to business, eh? At noon, His Majesty's ship Vulture will anchor at mid-river, General Monk. At noon, in broad daylight. I said to myself, what better way to avert suspicion? What better way for the whole world to see the commander of West Point conferring with the enemy? Change it. Ah, oh, well, the ship is already under sail, sir. Unencumbered as you are by any common sense, you will consult with me before you make any further dim decisions. I bow to force majeure, Monk. Told our cannons fired on a British ship. Are you all right, General? What happened? I stand before you at the pleasure of divine providence. Andre, your good family friend, made an attempt on my life. John could not possibly be party to treachery. John. Oh, it's John now. Huh? It is clear that all those tedious negotiations without monies or guarantees were engineered to take my life. Well, let me not hear his name in this house again. Benedict. Spanish olive oil, madam. From Spain. Thank you so much. Not interested. It was a gunboat that fired on you, not the ship. Because of the strict secrecy we requested, the gunboat captain wasn't informed of the meeting. He was only doing his duty. Our counterparts send their apologies. But we will meet them tonight. No. We must accommodate Washington, his entire staff, and token guard in two days. Do you not feel the hand of providence in our lives? Divine providence confirms and blesses our enterprise with a boon of portentous magnitude. 
Imagine the pleasure of the Crown if we should deliver them not only West Point, but also the legendary Washington, his staff and all the warriors of the Revolution. And in that void of power, it will behoove the Crown to install a native-born American to oversee the colonies. A man who has commanded armies on land and ships at sea. There's only one such man. His Lordship, Benedict Arnold V, Viceroy of the Americas. Andre must come to me on land. I know the risk, Johnny, but a moment like this will never present itself again. With just a hundred dragoons, we could snatch Mr. W and end the war. I warrant, as I love you, plain John shall be known as Sir John thereafter. And that, my dear friend, shall be the least of your prospects. May I inquire as to the nature of your business with Mr. Smith? I shall ever be advised by my staff, Major, but never answerable to them. I have made several inquiries regarding Mr. Smith. He is a known spy and has served both sides. If I deal with the devil himself, Major, I expect you to be civil to him. For some time now, I have felt you deliberately excluding me from your official business. And furthermore, there is an air of secrecy about your house as thick as smoke. You force me to take you into my confidence. There is an operation afoot of which fewer than five men are cognizant. A matter so momentous that that war could end in a matter of days. Days, sir. The secrecy is by request of Washington. Smith is a part of it. Anderson? Monk? Christian name of our common friend, or God save you, sir? Peggy. On which street did she live in New York? Fourth Street, not in New York. Name the place. Philadelphia. Mrs. Arnold sends you her very best regards. Return the same to Peggy. Mrs. Arnold will be pleased. I must reboard the vulture before dawn. We would prefer to take the fort without bloodshed, if possible. To that end, all cannons will be unmanned, all muskets locked away, all soldiers will be scattered about on work details. Our dragoons are on their way as we speak, poised for the capture of Mr. Washington. Mrs. Arnold has planned a nine-course feast for General Washington. His prodigious appetite will have him at table half the day, giving your troops more time to Surround the house. Save dessert and coffee for me. I must be assured that His Excellency will be treated with the utmost respect. The man's a traitor. A traitor's hang. Guns have opened fire on my ship. Now my ship will be leaving. Your guns have jeopardized our entire plan. Now how am I to return? Show this pass. New York City is but four or five hours ride. I can only hope that this pass works better than your other preparations. Who knows if there'll be time now to capture Washington. If you ride as well as you ruminate, there will be time. Fare you well. I would have the map. It's not wise. You, sir, are no judge of what is wise. A merchant would raise fewer brows than His Majesty's officer. Here. Take my cape. Is everything all right? 
right, sir? Uh, urgent business. God save the king. Gentlemen of the loyal party have nothing to fear of one another. Well, thank God I'm amongst friends once more. <laughs> Gentlemen, a man must make use of, of any shifts to get along these days. Here is a pass signed by our illustrious hero, General Benedict Arnold. Well, looks like we got ourselves a bloody spy. The general gave the map to me. Should I not find my way out of the fort's many bullocks? Ha having found my way, I used it to lessen the pinch of a hobnail poking through my boot sole. Take this post haste to General Washington in Danbury. Yes. Take this post haste to General Arnold at West Point. Right away, sir. Yeah. As the vulture came under fire, we were forced to return without the Major. Our dragoons are poised to bag the old fox, but none of our pickets from here to the West Point have heard from Andre. Left for General Arnold. Proceed. Pardon, sir, ma'am. A dispatch from a picket. Mr. Anderson is captive? Yes, sir. And these maps have been sent to Washington? Yes, sir. Has His Excellency as of yet received these maps? I know not, sir. They were sent by another courier. Your commander serves under me, and he should have sent the papers here. He has broken the proper chain of command, and he will be charged with gross insubordination. Major? Ready my carriage. Immediately. Uh, the destination, sir? Now, Franks, now! Lost. A letter for General Washington, sir. He's heading towards the point. Make haste. When Washington sees my signature on Andre's pass, he will know. I must destroy all correspondence. Sir, your carriage is being readied, and General Washington and staff have been sighted at the perimeter of the point. Arnold. She... Major, return the carriage and bring up the General's horse at once. General Arnold will greet General Washington at the gates. At once, Major! Yes, ma'am. They would not suspect me. And if they did, they wouldn't hang a woman. I'll distract them and, and buy you time to escape. I will not abandon my family. We shall be together again. Flee, I beg you. If not for me, for Nettie's sake, that he will not live with the burden of having a father hanged. No. Save the life dearer than my own. Good man, David. To what do I owe the compliment, sir? Years of devotion. 
I thank you. All muskets have been recalled for inspection by order of General Arnold, sir. What the bloody hell has happened here under Arnold's tenure? The fort looks worse than it did six months ago. I have orders to deliver this letter to His Excellency. We await a response. has betrayed us. Apparently, he was about to deliver up West Point to the enemy with all of us. Our greatest warrior is a traitor. Can anyone be trusted? Major Franks. Consider yourself under arrest. Sergeant. Colonel. Sir. Take my honor guard. Because you and Captain Arnold harm not a hair on his head. Sir. And from the highest branch, on the tallest tree will hang a son of a bitch! question that. I did, sir. But the general said Smith was part of a plan to end the war. Who wrote the book? The farmer. Joseph Calhoun. You will divulge everything you know. Traitor escapes to a British ship. He sent two letters under a white flag. I call him hero. Well, what hero would, would just abandon his wife and child, leaving us alone to fend for ourselves? And left a great stone above my head, which none can remove but his excellency himself. 
You have nothing to fear. And what should I say to little Neddy when he asks how his father died? Oh, he betrayed his country. I am happy for your sake that he escaped to a British warship. He sent a letter to you. You may return to your family or to your husband, as you wish. I've come to offer myself up for Andre. Your proposal does you great honor. Mr. Washington has suggested the same. John Andre is an extraordinary officer. My love for the man demands I do all in my power to effect his release. But I am a soldier first. And as a soldier, I am obliged to uphold a principle as cruel as war itself. A deserter is never given up. I do not consider myself a deserter, sir. What you think you are, and what the world assigns, will always be at odds. My only wish is that you witness I die a brave soldier. Yesterday, enlistments expired in Mr. Washington's army. We thought the rebel army would dissolve as these unpaid, unfed, unclothed ragamuffins went to seek the comfort of their homes. But something momentous happened. Against all reason, every man in the rebel army has re-enlisted for the duration. In ways no man could have foreseen, in ways you never could have intended, you have rendered your country a service far greater than your battlefield exploits. Your changing colors, you see, has made the squabbling jealous states think, feel, and act as a nation for the very first time. Effects of Major Andre, sir. You, sir, alone have founded a nation in ways that Mr. Washington and Congress could not. You have fused opposites. You have made them one, and in so doing, have ensured their eventual victory. In days to come, thousands upon thousands of Americans will follow me. I will ride into Philadelphia at the head of my American Legion, and I will capture. I regret to inform you, only 28 have deserted. 28,000? No, just 28. General Arnold, I never meant to asperse your character. If you will allow me, I would prefer to settle this with an apology rather than with bloodshed. I have suffered ingratitude on one side of the ocean. I will be damned to suffer it here. By the prevailing rules, gentlemen, the challenged party, Lord Lauderdale, has the privilege of firing first. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sir, I find myself unable to fire at the hero of Saratoga. We have given this ungrateful nation three of our sons. All I have left is my reputation. I insist that you fire, sir. Sir, I have fired. Are you on leave, sir? I demand that the pistols be reloaded. Am I not worth an ounce of lead? My name will be chiseled in granite amongst the betrayers. Lucifer, Judas, and Arnold. George Washington served two terms as president. He retired to Mount Vernon, where he died in 1799. Joseph Reed died shortly after the war. John Andre was buried in the Poets' Corner at Westminster Abbey by order of the king. Peggy died at 44 of cancer. She left her children a gold locket, which held a snippet of John Andre's hair. Arnold died in 1801 at the age of 60 in London. His only monument at Saratoga does not mention his name. It reads, in memory of the most brilliant soldier of the Continental Army, who was desperately wounded on this spot, 7 October 1777, winning for his countrymen the decisive battle of the American Revolution, and for himself, the rank of Major General.